Get out of the way of the bar. Because that thing's coming to hit you. Physics. All right, guys. So today, I want to look at some weightlifting fails. Snatching and clean and jerking specifically and some of the worst lifts I can find. The reason I wanted to make this video is because I think, well, we're going to have some laughs. You know, we're going to have some chuckles and chortles. But I also think that there are common issues uh, that cause these things. And some of these things have happened to probably you guys. Even though these make the sport look very dangerous, if there's a coach present, usually the loading isn't so much so that it puts you in a dangerous spot. With that in mind, there are still some technical issues that we can talk about and, and things that you can fix so that this doesn't happen to you. So the lifter in the video was the one who posted it to Reddit. And I think it went somewhat viral. It gets hit head. And then there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, you know, bad, scary reactions to this. So obviously there's the chin getting hit with the barbell. And this is actually a very common issue that whether it be a power jerk or split jerk should never happen. Even though, you know, he's definitely feeling some concussive force from getting hit in the chin. And that's where a lot of knockouts end up happening. I think that this is also a, a vagal response. And I'm not sure actually if that's the correct term, but usually it's when uh, blood flow is cut off to the brain and there's a, a slowing of the heart rate. And what ends up happening is you pass out. And this happens a lot uh, with deadlifts, even squats, certain things like that. He's actually having that vagal response, he's, get, he's cutting off his blood supply before he even attempts this jerk. And you can tell it's already like, sloppy. you know, he is already cutting off that circulation. I think the lights are going out already. Add in a little concussive force and that's what you get. I'm not sure. It's right here, this is blood. Right, that's blood supply. Let's talk about the the split jerk. This is one of my main cues. And I'm always saying this to lifters, always, always, always saying this to lifters, keep your chin high and look down your nose. Okay. So pick a spot on the wall and see if you can look down your nose at that spot on the wall. When you're in the front rack, a lot of times when people pick up the elbows, it kind of digs that bar in and it pulls the chin down. Okay. Not only are you going to hit your chin likely, right? This is also a very weak position to then go and extend the bar up and through. And I'm gonna show you uh, a video. This is a piece of cake clean and jerk for Lasha here, okay? But look at his chin position after the clean, right? Chin high, looking down the nose directly in front of him, right here. And the, the goal is as you dip, to not let the elbows come through and the chin come down. This is where it becomes very difficult, right? Because what ends up happening is the hips have to now flex while you maintain that position. That is stability in your T-spine. There's two things at play here. The chin is high, the eyes are looking forward, and you're able to keep that position as you dip and drive. You shouldn't be hitting yourself in the chin. This is a back squat fail and in weightlifting with no spotters, you should go to like maximum, maximum once every blue moon, man. Seriously, if you're going to miss with no spotters, the trick is your most solid position has to be the absolute bottom position. So you can see he knows he's not gonna get it. When you come back down, still you have to be rigid even though your legs are now completely compact. From there, throw the barbell back and your hips forward. If barbell comes forward and hips come forward, you're gonna have a bad time. Bad time. The barbell goes back and you don't bring your hips forward. Gonna have a bad time. Here's a, here's a common one. Hips come down, bar goes boom, forward, okay? Ideally, we don't want that big swing forward off of the floor. We'll watch the full lift here. What you're gonna notice here is in this bottom position, it's very difficult when your knees, when, when your hips are externally rotated, or sorry, internally rotated like that, 
and your knees are inside to stand up from this position, the knees need to come out and you need to stay rigid. When I see this position with a lot of lifters, I know they're Fred Flintstone. That noise. They're going to walk that thing out. And this guy has straps too. I don't know. I have no problem with this, but just letting the bar drop behind you, let go of your straps. He keeps his arms locked, which is good. We'll talk more about that. But, uh, you know, the nightmare ensues when he walks it forward, he's attached, and you have that. It's a push press. Holy. Never do push presses with chains. Just don't. Just don't do overhead movement with chains. Don't do much with chains if you're a weightlifter. Honestly, just maybe don't use chains, chains at all. So this is actually a really uh, a solid weightlifter. I think he's, I think it's a Russian guy. Straps, uh, you know, strap problem with the snatches. Guys, I, I don't think straps are dangerous. This is a very solid lifter. His technique is incredible, right? Like, you know, he's, he's actually could be a little bit better. As he hits the bar, you know, his heels are uh, off the floor. Solid catch position. Head is through. Barbell is over the base of the foot. So, like, right in the center of the foot. But watch his arms. He's able to push the bar out behind him. You should know how to bail a snatch behind. If the bar starts swooping back on you and you only know how to bail forward and your body weight starts going forward, the bar starts coming with you. It starts falling with you. And that's when you can run into some serious problems. But watch, his arms are straight, so he can pass straight through. The problem happens with the straps holding him on. He ends up sit, taking a seat on top of his bar. It's pretty funny. Vagal response. Watch. Okay. One of the things, I'm just going to talk about why this happens. It happens a lot in deadlifts. Flex your traps, right? As hard as you can. Not only do you have jack traps, but you're cutting off blood supply to your fucking head. Axle bar clean and jerk. Like I'd be okay if they got rid of it. I think it's so weird that either A, you're going to use your belt, right? To balance the bar and then clean from this high weird position, or you're gonna use your belly. Either way, it's gross. <laughs> None of us in here are going to do this movement because it's just silly. Okay. It's just, I just, just don't do it. Maybe, I guess there's some strong men in here. I'm sure you guys are going to do it, but basically it's this weird high pull thing to belly balance. Good. Now you're balancing the bar on your belly. Very weird. Her shoulders are way behind the bar. Her hips are way in front of the bar. Now, unless in the next foot long movement she has to get to here. She's bringing her hips back. Sweetheart, you're gonna go backwards. She tries, she flips her grip. Now she's got this super weird stance. Guys, this is just, I don't like it, okay? Not, you don't have a bar that spins and now you have to get this thing to your front rack with your hips in front of your toes. If your hips don't come back, like that's physics. Oh, drop the bar, drop. The <laughs> so it's 143 kilos, 315 pounds. He's got straps on. As far as straps go for cleans, I'm okay if you're catching above parallel and you're, you know you're smoking the whip. But when you start to squat underneath the bar in the front rack position, you can break both of your arms. And that's because now if the bar starts coming into you, you cannot push it away from you. Not only that, you're gonna lock your elbows in to your knees potentially, or you're gonna fall back and have the bar and you're gonna make a radius and own sandwich between the bar and the floor. And I'm telling you right now, the floor's got no give. And one thing I saw immediately, this guy's squat is it's purely knee driving forward. And you can tell, right? So he stands it up, he's gonna to try to fling it into the front rack. Okay. His, look at how far his knees are already traveled forward. Your hips have to go back at least an inch. His hips are forward. His knees are forward. He's going to have zero hip involvement in this. Look at his hips. 
He's really low right now, but there is no deviation between his hip crease and his knee crease. It doesn't even matter if his heels are on the floor because this is not ideal regardless. And then homeboy goes to his knees, drop the bar. Don't try to do a walking lunge, you idiot. Jesus, drop the bar, just drop the bar. Oh, there you go. Got it back into the front rack. Nice. Uh, hips rise super quick. And then he's just rolling it into his hips. The weight is completely back in the heels. You can see his toes flaring up here. You want your toes down. Makes contact with the hips because he just rows it in there and slams it. Does not have the mobility to have both his hips backwards and the front rack possible. A lot of times people think, I don't have the mobility in my elbow. That can be the case, but here, again, this is the same thing that happened with the strongman chick. Her hips are forward, and now she has to bring them back in order to front rack, right? So that's T-spine mobility and stability, the ability to open up like this. And as the moment his elbows have to come up, he's letting go of that thing, and then it goes into his elbow pit. If this doesn't tell you that you need work, uh, I don't know what, what does. <laughs> uh, here, this is someone who's just not confident in overhead position. The moment, this, the moment he starts his squat, watch his feet here, if you can see them. Everything's gonna shift back to the heels and it's gone. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, this is a muscle snatch. So for those of you who are not aware of this variant, basically you pull this thing from the floor and you can hit your hips or not. Once your legs extend once, they're not allowed to rebend. Okay, so he makes contact and you flex and extend your knees. Now you have to flatten out your feet and you can't rebend, right? So he's, his legs stay long. Now, already I know this is too much weight because the bar is about eight inches away from him. He's arched completely to get it back and his elbows are already dropping down. And now this turns into a snatch grip strict press. Utterly useless, utterly useless. When you make contact, elbows need to be above your wrists and your wrists need to be pointed down. This is the absolute opposite. Nice, dude. Press it out. Yeah, you'll get your PR. Carotid artery gang, checking in. This guy doesn't stand a chance. Rock a bye, baby. Na, na, na. Yeah, good night. Holy <laughs> shit. Uh, is that guy alive? How is that legal? I don't. I, oh! <laughs> There's only two things they could possibly hit and destroy in the video, and they hit them. You know that the knees right here are gonna start tracking in when the toes are pointed out. This person does not have the confidence and the strength really to externally rotate at the hip, pull the knees out and stand up from where they are. Look at those knees, right? They're coming together and the toes are out. It's a very weak position. Oh! Holy! Not terrible technique. He's obviously gonna miss it. From right here, throw the bar felt forward. They're bumper plates, bro. Just throw it. Get it away from you. Unless you can move your foot out of the way, which I'm sure he could have. Pick your foot up, push back a little bit harder. <laughs> okay. If you're not mobile enough to be in the bottom position and push the bar behind you, you need to work on that. This guy bends his arms, big mistake. Get out of the way of the bar. because That thing's coming to hit you. Obviously makes contact and has zero control, zero upward control. Bar is away. He couldn't be further. His Chin couldn't be further from the barbell. Huge hop forward. Look, if, you're if that thing starts to fall on you like that, push it. Push it back behind or else 
you're gonna have a nice tailbone scraper. Anyways, that's it guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.